folks and welcome into today's video. Hope you guys are doing great out there as always. In this video here today, we're getting into one stock that I just bought over $100,000 worth. And we're gonna get into so much dang more in this video than just that. This is a very, very in-depth video, okay? We're gonna get into in this video why I believe this stock will at least 3X my money. And not like in a super long time period, not like it's gonna 3X my money over the next 20 years or something like that, but actually in a pretty dang short amount of time. Okay, we're gonna get into why I think this stock is also a great recession play, which I love stocks that are also recession plays. You know why? Because you never know when one of those is gonna come out. Maybe it doesn't happen, but it's just, it, it helps me sleep better at night when there's a stock that I see, it has huge upside. And on top of that, I'm like, even if we had a recession, I could still see this stock actually doing pretty dang good. That, that is, a, you know, those are the sorts of stocks I absolutely love, okay? We're gonna get into why the risk reward is insane on this one. I would say, you know, the chances I lose money in the stock over the next three years is I would say way, way under 10% probability. I always have to put some sort of probability on it that I could lose money in a stock, right? But I would say it's insanely low that I would lose money in this stock, okay? Now, I talked about this stock one time before, one time before, and uh, in that video, some folks were asking like, is it really good? Can you go in more in depth on this stock? Things like that. And I'm a man of the people, so I said I could do just that. That's what we're doing in this video. I'm gonna go super in depth on this one. We're gonna talk about everything from like margins on this stock to balance sheet to the management team to everything across the board uh, along with obviously the big upside stuff. So hope you guys enjoy this video. As always, all I ask in return is that you smash that like button to help out the YouTube channel in a massive, massive way. Also lets me know you guys enjoy a video like this where we go actually really in depth on a stock and you guys get to hear kind of how I think about, you know, an investment like this, the risk reward, all those sorts of things. This is a $10 stock here today. I believe this stock is going to $30 plus over the next three years. Yes, $10 here today. I believe $30 plus over the next three years. So hope you guys enjoy this video. As always, if you haven't gotten a chance to download the Hungry Bowl, do so right now. Stop everything you're doing. Pause the dang video. Download that baby, okay? Listen, okay, we're making this like the sickest app ever, okay? It's just like week after week after week, we're trying to make it better and better and better, okay? You can track all your stocks, the cryptos, keep track of the market in there, right? But now we have features where you can listen to earnings calls right inside the app, okay? Conference calls, SEC filings, just added this one this past week where you can pull up 10 Qs, 10 Ks of companies in there. And we're just gonna keep making that one better as well, as well as read our daily business newsletter covering the biggest subjects going on out there and including some stuff that mainstream media just isn't covering, okay? And plus so much more. And we got so much more stuff coming over the coming months, guys. I hope you're absolutely loving that. And by the way, if you enjoy the Hungry Bull app, please leave us a review. It only takes a couple minutes out of the day. It would mean so much to us, okay? As for another free thing out there, Stock Hub. If you have not gotten a chance to check out Stock Hub yet, that is the best free stock market Discord chat out there. If you want to join that, it's pinned comment down there. It is absolutely free to do so, okay? Alrighty, guys, here's your hint, okay? This stock, I honestly love this stock, okay? That is your hint. I honestly love it. Can you guess it? It is the Honest Company, which is ticker symbol H-N-S-T, okay? Yes, the Honest Company. So I've bought a lot of this stock very, very recently, and I plan to buy a whole lot more, and we'll get into that in this video as well, how much more I'm planning to buy in this stock, what I'm planning to do, okay? Cost based on this one is 923 in this particular account. I put $32,000 into it already. We're up $3,600, so it's off to actually a really dang good start, okay? A uh, lot, lot more coming down the road, okay? And then in my main account, I have 7,777 shares. You know I live in Vegas and I love those sevens, okay? Uh, cost based on that one, 983, and I've averaged up on that one, which you know, for me to average up on a position, I have to really love the risk reward over the coming years. I don't just average up on everything, okay? I, I, if anything, I average down on positions. So to see me average up speaks volumes to where I think the stock's going over the coming years and how attractive I see the risk reward being. But that one, we're already up 3,300 bucks in that one as well at 4.42%, okay? Now, where I actually wanna start this video is why I think this is a recession-proof play. Or in another words, just a stock that I think would do tremendous even during recessionary times, okay? That's where I wanna start this. Well, 
Well, the Honest Company, if you look at the products they sell, they're needs-based products, right? If you're talking about beauty products, baby products, you know, like diapers and wipes and those sorts of things, skin care, bath and body, all their products, they're all needs-based stuffs at the end of the day. And that I love, okay? I love a business model, which, you know, it, even in other times, people still gotta buy that stuff, okay? Now you see down there, it says Jessica Faves. If you ever heard of this company before, it, it, you know, you might even be a user of the products, you might not, okay? But if you ever heard of it, you might have heard of it because Jessica Alba is the founder of this company. Yes, Jessica Alba, okay, the former actress, but honestly, the last decade, she's been focused on building this company up, okay? For literally the last decade she has, okay? And uh, she's done a, a pretty darn good job to get it to this place, okay? Now, the company, needs-based once again, right? Selling needs-based products. And those sorts of businesses, right, are ones that are very recession proof, okay? If you think about food companies, if you think about companies like Procter & Gamble, Johnson & Johnson, you know, whether the economy is doing great at a particular time or bad, those companies thrive, right? And the reason they thrive is because it doesn't matter if people are, are making bank or making nothing, right? I mean, you still need diapers, you still need deodorant, you still need toothpaste and, and detergent, those sorts of things, right? And so needs-based businesses are so perfect for that. And this is a perfect time to talk about competition because I've definitely heard, hey man, they got a lot of big competitors, okay? Let's talk about competition for a minute, okay? Procter & Gamble last year, which could be seen as a competitor to Honest Company, which we'll speak about that, okay? But they could be seen as a competitor, right? Procter & Gamble, if you look down the diaper aisle at your local Target or whatever store, right? You're gonna see a million Procter & Gamble items down there, right? Like they have almost a monopoly kind of on diapers and wipes and, you know, cleaning detergents, even a ton of makeup products, beauty products, right? Look at the company. I mean, it's a $76 billion in revenue last year. $76 billion a company did, okay? Honest Company did $300 million of revenue last year, okay? $300 million versus $76 billion, okay? You can't compare these companies. They're not competitors, just flat out, okay? Just because they sell similar products does not mean uh, Honest is any little bit of a threat to Procter & Gamble, okay? Quite simply, Honest does not need to beat Procter & Gamble to make a fortune on this stock. I don't need the Honest Company to beat Procter & Gamble to make a fortune on the stock. That's just flat out honest truth, okay? A lot of times people get so caught up into like, one company has to win, one company has to lose, when it doesn't work like that at all, right? When you begin to do some research on how big the TAM, the total addressable market is for these type of markets, you realize, oh my gosh, like Honest is just a, a drop in the bucket essentially, a drop in the bucket. Uh, to how big this is, right? It's like no different than, you know, I live in Vegas. If, if another restaurant opens in Vegas, it doesn't mean all the other restaurants lose business or something like that. It just simply doesn't work like that at all, okay? The Honest Company is a $926 million market cap. Yeah, $926 million. I you know usually we talk about billions of dollars of market cap. $926 million on Honest Company. Meanwhile, Procter & Gamble P&G is a $300 and $50 billion market capitalization, okay? That's well over 300X, well over 300X the market cap that Honest Company has, right? These companies are not even, you know, like, like Honest can't even be on Procter & Gamble's radar when it comes to competition. They're just at such different scales, it's not even funny, okay? With that being said, I believe I'm gonna 3X plus my money the next three years in Honest Company. I believe I will 5X to 10X my money in the stock by the end of 2030, okay? I'm not going after a 300X plus. Maybe over the next 50 years, Honest Company can do that and that'd be amazing execution, good for them, but I don't need Honest Company to beat Procter & Gamble. That'd be super cool if that happened and I'd make over 300X my money, but that's, let's be quite honest, that's not happening, right? And you know, I don't need that to happen because I can make a fortune on the stock without that happening. Now, also in regards to competition, you usually like to look at where other companies are trading at valuation-wise, right? Procter & Gamble trades at almost a five price to sales ratio, five, okay? Now, you would assume Honest Company probably has to trade at a lot higher price to sales ratio than Procter & Gamble. Procter & Gamble's super established, probably doesn't have a lot of growth, right? Well, look at this. Honest Company trades at a 2.98, a 2.98 price to sales ratio on this stock, right? 
So significantly, not like a little bit below Procter & Gamble, significantly lower than Procter & Gamble. And keep this in mind, the Honest Company is expected to grow revenues 13.5% in 2022, and that's nine analysts on average, okay? That's taking their average estimate, right? Some have it lower, some have it higher. The highest estimate's $380 million, right? But regardless, the average is 13.5% revenue growth next year. Procter & Gamble, on the other hand, is expected to do 3% and 4% revenue growth, okay? Procter & Gamble is like, you know, they try to eke out a couple percent revenue growth a year, and that's fine for that company, right? Cool for them, like they're already a profitable beast, they're, they're Goliath, like they don't need to grow 13% a year, right? But when you look at it from that context, you would usually expect Honest to trade at a significant premium price to sales ratio than Procter & Gamble because the growth is exponentially higher for, for Honest Company, what, 4X, 3X, or 4X the amount of growth, right, revenue growth? When all along, the Honest Company is actually trading at a significant, extremely significant discount compared to Procter & Gamble. And this is where things start getting really, really honestly interesting. Now, while we're on the subject of these other big Goliaths, okay, Procter & Gamble, Kimberly Clark, Clorox, Georgia Pacific, these other big conglomerates, right? Let's be honest, the Honest Company is honestly a great buyout candidate for a lot of those companies. Those companies love to do tuck-in acquisitions, right? That are in the hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions of dollars, right? And they love to acquire other companies to build their companies. Because remember, those companies have a lot of trouble having organic growth, right? Like every person probably on the planet knows what Tide detergent is, right? It's just really hard to not know that one, right? And so it's so hard for a company like Procter & Gamble to continue to grow that when it seems like everybody already knows your product, right? Think about like Charmin toilet paper. Like everybody knows that. Bounty paper towels, right? And so it, Honest is honestly a great buyout candidate for a lot of those companies. Now, personal. I hope a buyout does not happen, but we can acknowledge that it is honestly a perfect company to be bought out, right? The company, now the, keep in mind, okay, the company would probably not even consider a sale to another company until 2023, okay? I don't see it happening anytime soon in my personal opinion. Here's the deal, the company just went public a few months ago, right? It went public in what, May? And uh, the, you know, the company obviously had a very, very hot IPO and since then it's been a complete disaster, right? But yeah, it, when, when you're talking about a company that went IPO this recently, I don't see them selling out anytime soon. It's possible, but I don't see it really happening. But believe me, uh, you know, it, it, from at least a buyout candidate perspective, Procter & Gamble, Kimberly Clark, a lot of those big companies, they're always looking for, hey, who, you know, who's somebody we can buy and uh, get even a bigger market share. And, um, you know, Honest Company could honestly be somebody that's up there, right? Now, in terms of since the IPO, let's talk about that real quick, right? Because the stock went all the way up to $24 and then came flying down to $9 to $10 where it's at today, right? It does not surprise me at all, okay? I was not interested in buying the stock when it went up to those $23, $24 levels. The risk reward was just not super attractive, right? I mean, you're just talking about a significantly more valuation you have to pay for the stock. At $9, $10, it's a totally different story. A totally different story versus $24 a share, right? And keep in mind, a lot of companies that go public, they, they struggle in those first few months after IPO. Every once in a while, you get a hot one that you know it shoots up on its first couple of days of trading, and then it continues to just soar and soar and soar. But I can tell you for every one of those companies, there's a whole lot more companies that they just flounder, they go down, even Facebook back in the day, right? Remember when Facebook went IPO? Whew, you know, look what happened to that stock. It fell over 50% four months after IPO. And so it does not surprise me that this one's had a bumpy ride at all, okay? Now, in the private Discord chat, we have a new category called Honest Photos, right? Where folks see, you know, go to different stores, they can take photos around the United States, or even international, but it's really all around the United States when it comes to an honest company, right? We take photos and we post them up, okay? And what we're finding is Costco. Costco has a very good uh, relationship with the honest company from what we're seeing. Costco, very strong for honest. We're seeing a ton of different products in there, right? The other retailer that we're seeing a very close connection with is Target. We see a lot of big displays at Target stores, especially around baby diapers and white products, okay? But not just that. Look at this. This is huge, okay? This is makeup. 
right? Beauty products and Target stores, their own display, right? And this is something that doesn't even register a lot of folks for, for the Honest Company. Most people think of it as, oh, it's, they sell diapers, they sell wipes, baby products, maybe, you know, baby soaps and stuff like that. No, they got actually a, a beauty business that is building out really strong and, and everything is branded as Honest Branding. So if uh, somebody likes their product over here, they're much more likely to try this other product because they know of it, okay? It's a very new school concept in terms of how they're building this out where a lot of these other conglomerates in the space will try to buy out another brand, buy out another brand, and then they gotta try to focus on building that brand, spend a fortune on advertising so they hopefully can build it out. Whereas Honest, they get to focus all their attention on just one brand, which honestly, long-term, is gonna cut down on advertising expense in a massive, massive way because a lot of those other big dog companies have to spend a fortune on all these different brands and trying to keep all those brands relevant where honest just has to focus on one brand okay the makeup i mean when you look at the tam of the makeup industry it's crazy okay absolute crazy now look at this okay you know, uh, strong like Donkey Kong in the baby section in Target stores. Like they have like, they're not just like, oh, it's a little teeny display, like big displays in Target stores. And I'm imagining something like this is gonna happen in Walmart stores over time as well. Now, what I find is a lot of times, Target gets products before Walmart gets products. So Target tries to be a little more on the cutting edge, have the newer brands that are resonating with the millennials and uh, future generations have them in their stores first. And then what I'm finding a lot of times is, is Walmart ends up lagging Target. So these displays we're seeing in Target, I believe that's gonna happen in Walmart down the road as well, okay? Look at this, this is a photo my wife took last time she was at the Target store of the Honest Beauty section right next to, well, guess what? The Elf Beauty section. And there's so many similarities I see between Honest and Elf, it's absolutely crazy. The main difference obviously is Honest has a way bigger long-term opportunity than Elf, but I see a lot of trends that remind me very, very similar to when I bought Elf a couple years ago, right? And, and keep in mind, look at this, okay, the public account. What is the third best stock I hold in that account for a percentage gainer? It is Elf Beauty at a 315% gainer in that account, right? I mean, Tesla comes to be expected, right? Over a 1,500% gain in Tesla. I think we all know that one, right? Revolve, very sneaky, under the radar company, not a lot of people talk about, 427% gainer for us. Made over $120,000 just in this account on that stock, right? But yeah, Elf, Elf Beauty, ultimately, the third best gainer in that account, and I own some amazing stocks in that account. But yet Elf, a beauty company, a cosmetics company, the third best gainer. And you know what's interesting about Elf is, you know, that was definitely a stock when I was buying. A lot of people were like, I don't get it. Like, you know, and I keep, keep in mind, like 90% of my audience, I'm very, very aware of who watches my videos. 90% are dudes, okay? And a lot of dudes that don't know anything about beauty products or baby products or cosmetics, okay? And shout out to the dudes that do know about this stuff, okay? But it's a lot of them were like, what? You know, this doesn't seem like an exciting stock. I, you know, no, no, no. And yet, look at the gains, okay? The gains don't lie, okay? Now, when it comes to Honest, a lot of SKU expansion coming in future years, in my opinion. And, you know, can they get in more retailers? Absolutely. But what I'm finding is that with a lot of retailers, they have like one or two products in a lot of these retailers or just a couple of SKUs, but the SKU expansion I see for this company coming over time is gonna be massive. And keep in mind, what you're seeing in Target, I think that's gonna be coming to Walmart and a lot of other stores in the future as well as they continue to build up their retail business and their physical store business and, and presence as well, as well as on Amazon also, okay? Now, after that is international opportunity, which is very rarely even touched yet for Honest Company, okay? Now, let's talk about management team for a minute, okay? This company is led by Mr. Nick Vlahos, okay? And he's led the company since 2017, something to keep in mind, so it's not like he's a new guy on the job. He's been leading this company for the last several years. They went through a kind of a tough time in, in kind of, it was around like 2015, 2016, some branding problems, some complaints. They, they, they had a tough time, and they needed a guy like Nick to come in and kind of, uh, you know, get this boat back on the ocean, let's just put it that way. And he's done an amazing job getting the company back to growth, getting the company back to focus, and uh, getting the brand to being an, an a very positive position again. He came over from Clorox company before this. He was an executive vice president over at Clorox. And we know Clorox has connections in every single retailer 
yeah, imaginable, like literally, like, like not just in the United States, but probably even around the world, right? Then you look at Rick Rexing, who's the chief revenue officer. He also came over with Nick from Clorox, right? And so, you know, these are guys that definitely know how to get the brand presence in uh, retailers at the end of the day, right? And build strong brand, which Clorox has, I mean, you know, is it a stronger brand than that when it comes to, you know, a, a very commodity product? Like, think about it. Clorox sells a commodity product, and yet yeah, they have an amazing brand. Think about the Honest Company, or not such commodity products, and yet they're gonna be in a position where their brand is gonna be insane over the coming years, right? Now let's take a moment and go ahead and look at numbers. Now last quarter, this is very key, last quarter they had only 3% revenue growth, and this is why this stock sold off huge, and I was like, <laughs> okay, now it's time for me to get involved, right? But what a lot of folks don't, don't like keep in mind here, okay, is what happened in that same quarter last year. Oh, let's think back in time. Let's think back in time. What was going on? Oh, Rony Ronin was at its heights. Oh, everybody was buying everything in sight and stocking up and buying madness of every possible needs-based thing out there. Oh, that's probably gonna benefit a company that sells needs-based things like Honest Company, right? And so they had a comp against that ridiculous quarter last year, and yet the company still found a way to grow? I think that speaks volumes to where this business is at. The fact that they could still eke out a 3% revenue growth in a quarter over quarter, that's just, I mean, guys, remember the lines at Costco? Remember like how everything was selling out everywhere because people were just hoarding stuff like crazy? Toilet paper, tissues, paper towels, diapers, wipes, it didn't matter. You know, obviously like any type of cleaning products. It was all just selling out ridiculous because people didn't know like, is the world gonna close down for like years or what, you know, everybody that went through it, you, you know what happened there, right? And so the fact that the companies could still grow speaks volumes to about this company, right? And keep in mind, digital was obviously the one that was really down huge because a lot of people were just online at that time last year in that same quarter, just ordering whatever they possibly could. And the Honest Company honestly benefited in a massive way in the short term from that. And then they had a comp against these numbers and it was near impossible. Look at the retail, up 51% year over year in that same quarter, okay? Now, margins, gross margins, company's been doing 36, 37% gross margins, okay? I personally believe as this company builds out more and more, they expand their, their distribution, they bring down cost with the business, which every single time a company pretty much scales their business, they find ways to bring down cost, right? I believe that same exact thing is gonna happen here with the Honest Company. I'm looking at a business that I believe will get to 38% to 41% gross margins over the coming years, okay? From 36 to 37%, which 36 to 37% is not bad gross margins. I just think they're going to 38 to 41% over the next few years, okay? And that's gonna honestly help the bottom line out in a massive, massive way. Now, this company went IPO, as we just spoke about very, very recently, and the company had total net proceeds to the company were $91 million. So this puts the balance sheet in a very, very good situation, okay? And so if you think this company needs to just dilute a bunch of shareholder value over the coming years, they absolutely don't need to do that. Doesn't mean they, they won't if they needed to raise money, but they, they honestly, when I look at this company, when I look at uh, you know what I believe the net income will be over the coming years, and the fact that you know they have all this money now, I'm not looking at a company that I believe is gonna to have to dilute in any major way over the coming years. Obviously, you're always giving away some shares to key, key employees and executives and things like that, but outside of that, like the company's in a great financial position, okay? So to recap the honest company here, right? Valuation is far too low on this stock. The company has 10% plus revenue growth expected in 2022. The company has a strong growing brand. The company has a strong balance sheet. The, the company is near recession proof, right? Like a recession is no problem for this company. The company's a buyout candidate in future years, even though I don't want them to sell out. You can't deny the fact that they're a pretty darn attractive uh, buyout candidate, right? The growth is, I mean, when is this company gonna stop growing? Like, I don't see it. This whole decade, I expect them to grow every single year. Like, I just don't see them like, oh, they didn't grow this year. Like, that just doesn't even like comprehend. It just doesn't even hit me, right? 
and I have faith in the CEO and the executive team at this company as well, okay? And obviously Jessica Alba is super, super still like, you know, very involved with this company. From my understanding, this is still her main focus on a day-to-day -day basis uh, from the creative side, which I think is great in influencers and those sorts of things, okay? So my plan is to keep buying the stock and keep buying the stock and not stop buying the stock. And also I'm gonna be looking at out of the money 2024 calls. 2024 calls are coming out now. I'm gonna look at the out of the money ones, maybe do something there potentially, but honestly, I really just like owning the share straight up. And this could be a stock I end up holding for years and years to go in the future because it is such a recession proof company. It's one of those I could just build in a position and just kind of put in the filing cabinet and watch the baby grow over the next you know five, 10 years, okay? So only time will tell on where the stock goes over time. My guess is it's a 30 plus dollar stock three years from now, and hopefully a whole lot higher than that in future years. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up button before leaving, guys. I appreciate that in a huge way, and I hope you appreciate me diving into this in a 20 plus minute video with you guys here today, okay? If you wanna join us in Stock Hub, it's absolutely free to do so. That's gonna be the pinned comment down there. That's the best free stock market Discord chat out there. And don't forget to download the Hungry Bull. Uh, you are gonna absolutely love that, guys. It's on iOS and Android now. And if you really enjoy it, please leave us a review. It means the world to us, guys. We do appreciate it. The software team over there, they work their butts off day in and day out to hopefully make this beast better and better and better. Thank you for watching and have a great day.